Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Today we'll be taking a look at the Track Manager. The Track Manager in Reaper allows you to easily navigate a... a it allows you to do something. And something else. I should probably look it up real quick. The Track Manager in Reaper helps you to easily navigate a project with a high track count, and as the name would suggest, manage tracks. Let's take a look. The project I've got open contains 51 tracks, including folders and buses. I've got my mixer arranged to where it's a single row. There is an option to allow multiple rows of faders in the mixer, but I prefer to just have it as one. I've got some of my folder tracks collapsed, so if I uncollapse these, you'll see that this project can get a little bit difficult to navigate once everything is fully expanded, particularly when I open up my drums. So here's the same 51 tracks spread out in full width. From here, if I'd like to get back to my drums, I can grab the scroll bar at the bottom and move all the way over to the left where I've got my drums, or I can go up to the arrange view and use the scroll bar on the right to get to the desired track and then click here. It works, but there's most definitely a more convenient way. To access the track manager, click view and track manager. With the track manager open, I can see all 51 of my tracks a bit easier. I can select any track, but you'll notice that nothing is actually happening in Reaper. That's because we need to change a few options. At the bottom of the Track Manager, click Options and you'll see different things that are available to you. The first one I'd like to toggle is Mirror Track Selection. Click Options again and also enable the option below Mirror Track Selection which says to scroll to selected track when mirroring selection. That guarantees that if your tracks are off screen, the Reaper will scroll the interface to reach those tracks. Now that I've got those highlighted, let's scroll to the bottom of our Track Manager and click the last track which is my Reverb Track. As soon as I click that, you can see that both the track control panel and the mix control panel have scrolled to that section and have highlighted track 51. The default key press to show and hide the track manager is Control shift m as shown here in the view menu. If I press Control shift m we can see that the track manager has disappeared, and pressing Control shift m again enables it. If you have trouble using that key press to hide the track manager, make sure that you don't have the text field at the top highlighted. With this focused, you can search for tracks. I can type in snare and you see that it shows all tracks that have the word snare, and then I can click on those to move to them just as we did before. Now that I've clicked away from the track manager, I can press Control shift m again to hide it. Let's bring that back up and take a look at a few more options. With the track manager enabled, click on Options and Dock Track Manager window in Docker. By default, this places the track manager in the dock with your mixer. I can toggle between the two by clicking these tabs below, either Mixer or Track Manager. We can also move the position of the Track Manager to place it somewhere that we can keep it persistently on screen and still have access to the Mixer. If I left click the Track Manager tab and drag to the right, you can see this blue highlight that has appeared on the right edge of the screen. If I release my left mouse button there, my Track Manager is now docked to the right side of the screen and I still have access to my Mixer. You can resize this for whatever suits your workflow. Sometimes you may wish to have it wider, other times you may wish to have it moved more over to the right to where you can just see those tracks and be able to quickly get to whichever track that you need to work on. Let's move this out just a little bit more and take a look at these columns. TCP is Track Control Panel. The dot that's in that column underneath TCP means that this track is visible in the Track Control Panel. If I click the dot under TCP for track number one, drums, we can see that that track has now disappeared in my track control panel, but is still visible below in the mixer. If I click the dot under the mix control panel column, it's now removed from the mixer. You can toggle the visibility of both the track control panel and the mix control panel individually, or if you'd like, click on options and place a check mark next to link TCP mixer visibility. With this option checked, if I disable visibility under track control panel, it also makes it invisible in the mixer. Linked or unlinked is fine, there is no right or wrong, it's just a matter of whichever suits your workflow. I'll disable that for now. Another option is indenting the tracks in folders. As we can see in the mixer, I like to have my folders indented to help me better identify what's in a folder. If I enable the indent tracks in folders option in the track control panel, we can see that the tracks are indented in the track manager as well. Let's bring our drums folder back to the track control panel and the mix control panel. You can also rename tracks in the track control panel. Let's rename our drums track. I'll call it drums folder. That's now renamed in both the track control panel and the mix control panel. Double clicking the number under effects will bring up the effects chain for the selected track. I've only got one plugin on that track currently and that's Magnetite by Black Rooster Audio. If you right click the number under the effects column, you can go directly to the plugin that's on that track and adjust its parameters, or you can add more plugins. This interface may be a little bit clunky for adding new plugins, but it's a nice way to easily access plugins that are already on the track or disable them. 
I'll slide this over a little bit further so we can inspect the other options that are available in the track control panel. The In Effects column will show any effects that you may have on the input. Input effects plugins are recorded along with your input and are essentially printed to the track. The PDC column shows any plugin delay compensation that may be in place based on the plugins on that track. The Offset column, I have no clue what this one is for, I'm going to have to go back to the manual on that one. The Channel column will show you how many channels are on a track. The default is two channels. If you have MIDI on a track, you may have a lot more channels than this, or if you're side-chaining something. R, M, and S stand for Record, Mute, or Solo. You can arm a track, mute a track, or solo a track from right here in the Track Control Manager. The Lock column allows you to lock or unlock a track. The next column is supposed to lock the track height, but I've had trouble getting that to work. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong or if that's just a bug, but admittedly I've never used this option. If you have MIDI on a track, you can double-click in the MIDI column to open the MIDI editor. FIPM stands for Free Item Positioning. You can toggle free item positioning on or off for desired tracks, and you can also freeze tracks in the Track Manager. If I move back over to the far left, we can see where I have my tracks colored. Clicking on a track's color brings up the color picker and allows you to change to another custom color. When I've got the Track Manager docked, I usually like to have it moved a bit further over to the right with nothing more than the name, the colors, and the Track Control Panel and Mix Control Panel visibility. I have a custom button in my toolbar that allows me to toggle the visibility of the Track Manager, or you can also just use the default key press of Control shift m or whatever other key that you may want to bind to that. If you don't know how to create your own custom toolbar buttons or change hotkeys associated with actions, click the link above. As you can see, the Track Manager is a great way to help you get around larger projects a lot better. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to thumbs up this video, share, and subscribe. You can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee, I Like Coffee, or the Patreon link below. I know it's just water, that's why I need you guys to click the Buy Me A Coffee link. You can also find us on Discord. Check the description for the link. Gotta have coffee if you want to make coffee out of that water.